Hi, I'm Shannon Oliver O'Neill, Director of the Center for Growth's Rhode Island office. Today I'm going to share with you a basic mindful touch exercise that I use often with couples who are in sex therapy. Mindful touch is a tool that sex therapists use all the time to help people to be more present, less anxious, and more connected during sexual encounters. You might benefit from this exercise if you aren't sure what you like when it comes to sex or at least how to communicate that to your partner or if you experience difficulty with erections, low desire, difficulty with orgasm, dissociation or dysphoria during sex, if you have a history of sexual trauma, uh, if you have relationship-focused OCD, or anything else that might make it difficult to connect either with your body or with your partner during sex. All right, so the exercise I'm going to share with you today is actually the first in a series that I use with my clients. And depending on your exact issue, I would tailor the series to fit your specific needs, but generally most people start here. And this is something that you could try at home with your partner even before coming into therapy. Um, a couple things before we get started. Number one, let's talk about our goals. Um, so your goal for this exercise is just to practice noticing when your mind starts to wander and bringing it back to focus on sensation. You'll be equally as successful if you have your mind wandering all the time, but you are able to bring it back each time as if your mind stays focused the whole time. There's no one right way to do this. There's no one right way for success to look like, but we really want to practice noticing when our mind wanders and bringing it back. Um, the other important thing to note is that although this is an exercise I do with my couples who are in sex therapy, it's actually not an explicitly ex sexual exercise. Um, there won't be any genital touching, um, you might feel aroused, you might not, there's no right way to feel, um, but it definitely should not lead to a sexual encounter after the exercise is over. Um, and the reason for that is um, if you go in with the expectation that this is going to lead to sex, you'll probably actually activate a lot of the patterns that have been creating problems for you in your sexual relationship so far. And we don't want to do that. We want to have a fresh start. So this is not a sexual exercise and it should not lead to sex. Great. All right, so let's talk preparation. Um, so first thing, you need 30 minutes when you and your partner can have uninterrupted time together. That means no kids, no pets, nothing that you need to rush to immediately afterwards, which might pull your focus. Um, you need to make sure that you have a room that's a comfortable temperature for being naked or semi-clothed. Um, and if it's winter, you might need a space heater or something. And then lastly, you'll need a timer. Um, if you are going to use your phone, make sure you put it in airplane mode and turn off notifications so you won't be distracted during the exercise. So for step one, we're gonna designate one partner to touch and one partner to be touched. Um, once you've done that, both of you will take off as much clothing as is comfortable from above the waist, because this is the only area we'll be touching today. Um, if you're gonna be anxious, distracted, or actively dysphoric by removing an item of clothing, just leave it on. This exercise isn't gonna work as well if you're feeling upset or activated. Um, for step two, we're gonna set the timer for five minutes. The toucher will touch their partner's back, neck, arms, and scalp, only using their hands and fingers. Now, this is important. The toucher is going to touch for their own interest or pleasure. The toucher is not going to be trying to please or give any kind of particular experience to their partner. The touched partner will let the toucher know if something is ticklish or painful or otherwise activating by just moving the toucher's hand. Uh, but the toucher really should just focus on their own experience versus their partner's at this point. This is in order to make it as simple as possible for the toucher to stay focused and in the present moment. And how we'll stay focused, um, we're, we're going to give the toucher three different anchors, um, three different sensations that they can focus on, temperature, pressure, and texture. Um, so to start, we're looking at temperature. How does temperature change as you move around your partner's body? How does temperature change as you touch specific body parts over a certain period of time? For pressure, we're thinking about how does your partner's skin respond to different pressures? What temperatures and textures do you experience as you vary pressure? What pressures feel interesting to you? And for texture, we're thinking about how texture varies as you touch different parts of your partner's body. What textures are interesting to you? 
what, how do textures vary in response to changes in temperature or pressure. So if at any point the toucher notices that their thoughts have wandered, that's okay, just note it, I'm having a thought, and return to exploring texture, pressure, and temperature. If the toucher is having difficulty being present, that's okay too. Um, sometimes it's helpful to just take a break, close your eyes, rest your palms on your partner, and take three deep breaths. Once you're ready, you can return to exploring texture, pressure, and temperature. When the timer goes off after five minutes, it's time for step three. It's time to switch those roles. Um, so the partner who was touched becomes the toucher and vice versa. And after those next five minutes, it's time for step four, checking in and debriefing. Um, some questions you might ask might be, how did that feel? Um, when you were toucher, what was it easiest to pay attention to? Of those three anchors, which were the ones that really helped you stay present? And what were the kinds of things that your mind wandered to? So now that you've done the exercise at least once, you might consider repeating it another two to four times during the week. Um, and if you do that, you may notice that you get a little bit faster at catching those thoughts when they wander and bringing them back. You may even have longer periods of time between when your thoughts wander, um, which is exactly what we want to see, right? As we build this muscle for being mindful, being present during sex, it's going to help us lay the foundation to address that myriad list of issues we discussed at the top of this video. Um, so if you like this exercise and would like more, um, or if you have trouble with it and want support troubleshooting, um, you might consider scheduling an appointment at the Center for Growth with myself or another sex therapist to go a little bit deeper into this work. Um, but either way, I, I hope this exercise gave you something um, interesting to try and a, and a good start on building the kind of sexual relationship that you'd like to have.